Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 38 and today we are returning with the season finale with our Lions as we take on Leicester on the final day where Millwall are safe in the Premier League for another season. Before we play the game though, I'm going to show you just how we survived our first year in the top flight. And really, it was the last episode uh, where we didn't confirm safety, of course not, but it was the reason why we were able to pull away from the bottom three and stay away. You saw our back-to-back -back victories in relegation six-pointers against the Saints and against Derby away at Pride Park as well. And I then played five, uh, sorry, six games off camera, and I said I might come up to Newcastle and Brighton games if we were in trouble, but instead, we did pretty much what we needed to do. We started with a goal to draw at home to West Brom, and despite back-to-back -back losses, first against Arsenal, went at the Emirates stadium uh, by two goals to nil uh, where Aubameyang scored a penalty and the first goal score was quite nice as well and then our 2-0 defeat at home to Manchester United where Marek Hamšík scored a penalty we've we've conceded quite a few penalties in in recent weeks which is quite a surprise because I was talking about how good our discipline had been this season and uh, in the second half of the season it's sort of fallen apart and Alexander made it 2-0 uh, we lost both of these games but at this point due to Derby and Burnley and in particular the former having really horrendous runs of form it meant that coming to this game away it's in James Park it's Newcastle United. Basically, just a one win from our final four games would realistically do it for us, if not mathematically. And we got the win away at St. James's Park in one of the games of the series. It was incredible. Um, Rhett Kuchar scored the first goal, then Merahina equalized. Then Kuchar put us back in front. Then Zigrova uh, gave Newcastle their second equalizer of the game. Five minutes later, they went down to 10 men. And with three minutes to go, well, you've seen the title. I mean, it was just, it was incredible. Do Dimitri Payet off the bench won us the game with three minutes to go to give us the three points and confirm safety in the Premier League. It was extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. It was one of those moments where, like, you couldn't write it. Payet came in this season, has done basically nothing, you know, with his only goal for the club, secured survival for us. It was absolutely incredible. Limbs in the away end at St. James's Park, and, uh, and we got the win by three goals too, and that basically did it. And after our 0-0 draw at home to Brighton, that mathematically confirmed it. So uh, after that, a 1-0 victory away at the Toffees uh, against Goodison, uh, sorry, away against the Park against the Toffees, Everton, uh, by a goal to nil. John Black scoring the only goal of the game. At this point, we already confirmed safety in the Premier League, and that is how we secured our safety. And really, it was, it was these three games here, picking up seven points from nine against relegation rivals. All three of these teams are around us in the relegation zone, and we got seven points from nine. And that's really impressive after a horrendous run of form. And despite the back-to-back -back losses, to have, uh, again, seven points from nine in the last three games as well, we've we've picked our form up right at the end of the season. And to be fair, it shouldn't come as much of a surprise because we've been in such bad form all throughout the second half of the season. Again, we hadn't won a game since November against West Brom. It was only a matter of time before we started winning games. And, and when we did, we did it at the crucial times against uh, opponents around us. And, uh, and yeah, that is how we secured survival in the Premier League. So heading to the final day, as you can see, the three teams that are going down, and they've already been confirmed. Brighton, as we know, are going down rock bottom. Uh, Burnley finishing in 19th place, or so you would suggest. And Derby, who have had a terrible run of form to end the season off, losing pretty much every single game. They're also going down as well. And we can finish as high as 14th place in our debut year in the Premier League. That's very impressive. It is looking likely we'll probably finish in 15th place, which is still incredibly impressive. And the most impressive thing about the whole season is we didn't spend a single minute in the relegation zone. Extraordinary. I mean, even after our horrendous run of form, we still kept our heads above water and, uh, and managed to stay out of the bottom three. That's extraordinary. Although it does say a lot about how bad Derby have been in, in the recent weeks. Just haven't been able to get out of the relegation zone when they have gone straight back down into it. They've been really bad this season. And uh, a big reason as to why they're going back to the championship, which is shame because I like Derby. But um, either way, we're safe and uh, that's the most important thing. Uh, the only other thing to decide as well is who wins the title on the final day. It was looking that's going to be Chelsea. Uh, they're at home to Spurs. Manchester United away at Arsenal. And uh, Manchester United have to win. And uh, if they win, Chelsea needs to match the result, which you would imagine they could do on the final day. So we are taking on Leicester uh, in the final game of the season. Uh, neither team has anything to play for now. So it's it's a bit of a meaningless game. But uh, I'm, I'm still looking forward to it. And uh, it should be quite fun. So uh, we're lining up in a 4-4-2 for the game. I've been changing the uh, tactics around all throughout this run of camera. The 4-4-2, the 5-3-2, which we obviously saw in the last episode was so good for us. And of course, the 4-1-4 
one, uh, which is a counter style of play. Uh, I can't remember if I set this up on camera or not, but this is the formation I used against Newcastle, and it worked really, really well. We're going to 4 4 2 for the game, though, and uh, this, this is a game where we're saying farewell to quite a few players we won't see next season. We'll see how they get on the final day, and, uh, and yeah, there you go. Um, hang on a minute, I've just messed everything up. That's not right. Sinclair should be up there. Those two should be changed, and there you go. Okay, so this is the team of the game then. Uh, we've got George Long in goal, might not come back next season, a back for of Montreal making his debut on the final day in his final appearance in professional foot before he retires. Uh, Hutchinson, the captain, Cahill, who's leaving on a free transfer in Jamesbury as well. Uh, in midfield, Menji on left, Webster on the right, who, by the way, actually I'll talk about that in a minute, uh, Ryan Tunnicliffe and uh, Dimitri Pyatt as well, who is going to hit 20 games. This is, the, this is his 20th game for Millwall, which means he's going to get that one-year extension. And after the game winner against Newcastle, yeah, I'm pleased to see him stay for another year. He's not going to do much next year, he'll barely play, but he deserves another 25 grand a week for next year. Dimitri, Millwall legend, who would have thought it? And I've talked to together Sinclair and Niasse, who both probably won't be here next season. Definitely Niasse, who leaves on a free transfer. And on the bench, Anderson, uh, Yannick Vergers, uh, Eric Peters, who also leave at the end of the season, Matt Higgins, Jay Fulton, Collar, and Aidan O'Brien, who also leave at the end of the season. So, first and only games, Leicester is the final day. It's meaningless, but we're not really too bothered. Nacho Monreal, you can take number 99 for your final the game of the season. Come with you Lions, let's see how we get done. You know, even though going into that Newcastle game, we only needed one win against them or Brighton or Everton or Leicester. Um, as Pyatt almost scored an own goal on the final game of the season. I still wish I would have came back for the Newcastle games. It was definitely one of the games of the series, no doubt. And with Pyatt scoring the winner, I was going mental. But um, again, we, we only needed one win from the final four. I was pretty confident we'd get it. And uh, to, to have got it at St. James's Park in those sort of circumstances, yeah, I was delighted. But um, yeah, another season in the Premier League then, absolutely delighted. I, I, I you know, honestly, I, I felt as though after our first half of the season, we were going to be safe this year. As Hutchinson has his head of save by Perrine. But after that abysmal start the second half of the campaign, I was just wondering whether we'd ever get ourselves out of the slump, but we did at the right time. And uh, I think it was the last episode, really, where it sort of it sort of made me feel now, if we throw this away, then it will be a massive choke because we've got destiny in our own hands with six points clear and we've got some favourable fixtures to come. So delighted what happened in the last episode and, uh, and also delighted what happened off camera as well as Kovalenko heads it wide and it's still 0-0 quite like giving players send-offs in FM. I don't know why. It's like it, it really doesn't matter whether they play or not before they leave the club. It's just quite nice to do that, you know. But I'm actually really pleased that Pyatt is going to stay for next season unless he decides to retire in the postseason, which he might do. Um, because that, that game winner man, was just incredible. Absolutely incredible. And uh, I never thought I'd utter those words. Dmitry Payet keeps Millwall in the Premier League. Anyway, here's Lanzini through to Kovalenko. That's a great ball through himself. And that's a lovely pass towards Mares, who reached it at target. And it's still 0-0. Half an hour in Leicester had quite a few good chances, but can't hit a target right now. Oh, Sinclair. Sinclair, oh, saved by Perrine. Sinclair just burst through one-on-one -on -one there. And, and should have at least, well, he hit the target, but he put it straight at the goalkeeper down, it's still 0-0. There's been some decent chances in this first half for both teams, but neither one has been able to take advantage, hence why we are still deadlocked. But as Leicester looks to close our first half strong, they might be able to get themselves in front. Son and us, oh, a great ball inside. And even better finish as well. And right on cue, as I was talking about there being some good chances, but neither side being able to break deadlock. There it is right there. Nice finish by the number 22. Fired past George Long and into the back of the net. And it was Payet. Payet. Oh, I wish I wasn't playing him now. I wish he'd leave. No, I don't really. But either way, Son plays it through. And it's a great finish as well into the back of the net. Long's never getting anything on that one. So much shot power. And it's 1-0 to the Foxes. Dimitri Payet will be staying next season, but he won't be playing much. I'll tell you that much. You know, I think Pyatt probably did that on purpose. Like, he probably thought, for goodness sake, man, I, I wanted to leave come the end of the season and go to the MLS or something. Now he's making me stay at the Den for another year. I'm 35 years old, for goodness sake. Let me retire. But either way, he, uh, he made a mistake on purpose and gave Leicester the goal. But anyway, it's, it's still 1-0. We haven't played that badly in this game, but Leicester have taken the chance Dave had and could have gone 2-0 up there as the goal scorer heads it over. But we're still trailing by one, and and to be honest, I'm not I'm not really first. Like this is this is a bit of an anticlimactic way to end our first season in the Premier League. Don't get me wrong, but I much prefer this to, than to actually needing a result on on the final day. Getting it done before the final day, yeah, much much more favourable for me. Like, there's no heart in mouth moments anymore. Who am I kidding? Dimitri Pyatt's already secured survival for us in the Premier League. He's already a Millwall legend. He could score a hat-trick of own goals on the final day. It wouldn't change that fact. He kept us in the Premier League with that game winner against Newcastle. So we'll always love him. As Niasse plays it through to Aiden O'Brien off the bench in his final appearance in the Millwall shirt. Finds Menji. 
And Menji crosses, and there's Nyase off to Woodwork. Nyase, in his final appearance for the club, almost made it 1 1. Is there still time for a late equalising goal or a second for Leicester as we're in stoppage time right now? Here's Lanzini on the ball, finding Ihe and Acho. And the four man City fan finds Ndidi back to Lanzini, plays it across to the goal scorer. Great chance here for a second and off the woodwork as it goes behind for a goal kick. Leicester should have wrapped this game up a long time ago, but looks like it won't matter. They should be getting the three points, but again, it doesn't really matter too much. Well, no, they will move into sixth, actually, interestingly enough, as Chelsea are beating Spurs. So that means. As there is the second goal right there, as Haller bags his brace. That means that Leicester actually, due to this win on the final day, may well get a Europa League spot. We'll have to see what's going on in the Cups right now. But Bournemouth are in fifth. They won't overtake them. But they're going to overtake Spurs and head into sixth place. So I said neither team's got anything to play for. To be fair, Leicester have come in knowing they've got a chance at Europa League football. And looks like they're going to get it. It's 2-0. They're going to win the game. But we're not really fussed. We're still celebrating regardless. We can both celebrate together. Double celebrations on the final day then as, oh, George Long made an incredible save there on Damari Gray to keep it at 2-0. And, uh, and yeah, both both teams can, can celebrate then. Both teams can, can share a glass of champagne together because, of course, as we knew, we'd already survived. Leicester have now gone into sixth. And I will say I'm not happy the performance will motivate some of the players on the final day. Not that it matters now, of course. And, uh, and yeah, there you go. So the Premier League is going to finish like this then as Arsenal beat Manchester United on the final day and Chelsea beat Spurs. It wouldn't matter what Man United did anyway. Chelsea still would have won the title. And this is how the season finishes. Chelsea are champions of the Premier League, I believe, for the first time in the series. Is that right? I... I, I mean, there's a way of finding out very easily, but um, there we go. Uh, yeah, Chelsea champions for the first time in, in the series. Wow, Manchester United haven't won a title in the past two years. That's surprising considering last year's save with Hull. Uh, Manchester United, Man City and Arsenal wrap up the top four then. As Bournemouth, yeah, and Leicester on the final day due to their win over us, qualify for the Europa League. Foxes, you're welcome. Spurs dropped the seventh. Uh, Liverpool finish in eighth. Stoke and Watford round in the top ten. And as for the bottom three, as we knew, it was confirmed already. Brighton, Burnley and Derby finally got a win to bust out of their bad form when it matched. Mattered not, uh, finishing the bottom three, and we do indeed end up in 15th place with Southampton and West Brom below us in 16th and 17th respectively. So what a debut year for Millwall in the Premier League, then absolutely delighted as Monreal made his brief return to English football, and uh, and that's it then. We are uh, safe in the Premier League as we knew, we're getting £11.9 million for finishing in 15th, that's incredible, I'm so delighted with this. And uh, the one thing I was going to discuss pre-game, but I didn't do so, about Clinton Webster is he's going to the World Cup yes the World Cup in Qatar 2022 he's been called up to the England squad for the first time in the save and he's made the World Cup squad I'm absolutely delighted about that uh, I've said before it's one of those things in FM when your players make their debuts for their countries I really like it even more so when it's a player at the academy so Webster is heading to the World Cup that is absolutely awesome I also have one more representative as well and that is Jerome Sinclair who's going with Jamaica so good luck to Sinclair with the those boys and good luck getting out of that group Jamaica you're gonna have a very tough time there that's for sure but we've done it we're saving the Premier League we already knew that and I'm absolutely delighted well done lads so I think what we'll do as we end the season is we will take a look at our final squad as we always do uh, assess the team heading into season six and uh, also look at our end of season awards and whatnot as the players get inducted to the overall best 11 uh, Dale Fry in his first season has made it onto the subs bench. Fair play. And uh, the end of season awards as well, where Brito was player of the season. Wow. That is surprising, to say the very least. Um, okay, he had a decent season for us, don't get me wrong, and was a key reason why I reached the Carabao Cup final. And to be fair, he did score six goals in 27 Premier League games. Not bad for the kid out of the academy, but I personally would have given it to Marek, who was our top scorer with 13 this year. Uh, and even Webster, I thought, with 27 cent of votes, was very good as well, helping us survive and uh, getting caught up for England. But fair enough. Uh, Ferguson won goal of the season. Uh, Bree was the signing of this. Really? Stop. What's wrong with Marek? Why don't these guys like Marek? What? Okay, fair enough. And uh, Marvin Brill was the young player of the season. Well, that's surprising. And, uh, and as for our season review, uh, Mill will have been inspected to be relegation certainties. All right, calm down. Heading into the season, although that was the case, they will be delighted to have finished with their heads above water, which we did. The Lions got off to a terrible start, sinking as low as 14th and were always involved in a relegation dogfight many have predicted them to be in. What?
I, no, no, look, we got off to a good start. We won on the opening day. What? I don't know. That's that's pretty much always wrong for me. I don't know why. And uh, and there we go. So for our end of season team meeting, I'm going to say to the boys passionately, uh, the season's finished now. We've done a brilliant stay in this division. Don't be under any illusions. Do we won't be for another. Oh, that's, no, that's not right. I'm going to say. The season's over, and it's time for you all to go and have a well-deserved break after staying up. I want every single one of you to be fully rested and in good condition when you get back, though, no, because we're going to be looking for a mid-table finish next year. And, oh, God. I don't think a mid-table finish is really a realistic target for this season. Um, okay, maybe that is unrealistic. All I can really expect for you is that you work hard as possible to try to avoid a drop. Uh, okay, well, that 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 didn't go well. That was not what I planned, but fair enough. And uh, and there you go. So, um, yeah, we'll get the boys back as early as we can. And, and, and yeah, there we go. I, I'm, I'm just, I don't know what to say, but the season's over. It's very anticlimactic, but yeah, Pi has got the year extension. And, oh, that's what I was waiting for, the initial budgets. How much have we got next season now? In terms of our finances, have been going up and up and up and up and up due to our good control the wage budget. £68 million! Pounds. Yes, JB! Absolutely love it! That's basically £69 million! Pounds. Oh, yeah! The border upgrade in the training facilities, that's always good! Oh my goodness, 69 million. I thought last season's budget was good. 69 million? Yes, please! Our finances have been going up year after year after year. No, that's not right. They've been going down year after year after year. But this year they've been going up, and it's because of the TV revenue you get in the Premier League. It's so, so good. Look at that, like 6.5 million a month. That's incredible. And one of the one of the reasons why our finances have been increasing so well this season is because when you compare uh, our salary uh, compared to the other teams in the division, we're paying our boys £18 million a year. The next team in the Premier League, in terms of the lowest salary, are on £55 million. That's incredible. That's like almost £40 million less than the next team in the Premier League. We don't pay our players much money at all, and that's why we've been able to save so much cash in our debut year in the Premier League. So £69 million. I shouldn't be as surprised, but that is that is fantastic. We are going to be splashing the cash in the summer. Get in. And so I think as we end the season, we'll leave it there then, and uh, I will show you what happened in the championship as Crystal Palace were crowned champions, and they avenged their demons of last year to reach the Premier League. They are back in the top flight, so that's good. Another rivalry for next season. Norwich are also joining them, and one of Leeds or Middlesbrough, and I guess for rivalry's sake, we would prefer to see Leeds up there. So uh, yeah, that's that's the teams that will be heading to the Premier League. I'll let you know who won the playoff final out of those two right now, but yeah, Middlesbrough back in the Premier League would be quite fun as well, so even one of those two I'm fine with. And, um, and yeah, so we shall leave it there then uh, I'll also come back and show you what happened in the World Cup as well and I think what I might do actually in the next episode is do a special in-depth look at the save I did this in the whole save a couple of times where I basically go around the league go around the world show you who's doing what right now in the divisions like in the other top tiers and whatnot behind the scenes of Millwall what's going on in the background of the club as well and yeah I think I might do that in the next episode so the next episode won't be the new season uh, season opener the transfer special but uh, instead what we'll do is we will uh, that's not right we will uh, we'll come back and we'll do a special in-depth look at the save. And then we'll come back for the season opener in episode number 40. So thank you very much for watching today's episode of the Footman Series, guys. Hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode of the season finale, then please do drop a like. As likes are, of course, very much appreciated. Jade the Silver up to eight determination. Get in. Uh, please do leave a like and enjoy the video because likes are, of course, much appreciated. And they really help the channel out as well. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic evening. Uh, gear up for the World Cup tomorrow. And again, I will see you for the special in-depth look at the save in tomorrow's episode and then we'll return in episode number 40 with the new season the transfer special where with 69 million pounds in the bank we are going to be spending an awful lot of money and trying to improve this team the best way we can have an awesome evening much love to you and i'll see you for the next episode very soon bye